Greetings everybody. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If there are any first time viewers, let me say how excited I am to have you join us. Today, I will be discussing all things Zigbee. What is it you may be wondering? Well, it's a wireless mesh networking protocol that is utilized in a variety of consumer and industrial applications. Mesh networks are formed by Zigbee devices, which means that a majority of mains powered devices can operate as a repeater for other devices in a network. As a result, Zigbee networks are extremely flexible and scalable. Zigbee has gained popularity in the home automation industry in recent years because of its low power consumption, mesh networking capabilities, and interoperability with a variety of devices and platforms, which makes Home Assistant the ideal candidate, in my opinion, as it promotes local control and privacy and allows us to control our devices without relying on cloud services. Due to the fact that we have three options for Zigbee, I believe that it would be unjust to include them all in this one video. So I decided to separate them into three videos. This is the first of the videos detailing the conversion of a Zigbee bridge to Zigbee Home Automation or ZHA. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so before we get into the requirements, let's just have a look at the version of Home Assistant that I am running. So to get there, I'm just gonna go to settings and about. And here you can see the latest version numbers that I'm running. So other than Home Assistant, as we just saw, we're going to need a Zigbee bridge and a few other things to get this done. They are an FTDI serial to USB converter, that's 3.3 volt capable, a USB extension cable, which makes it easier for us to plug in our bridge with the FTDI, a soldering iron, and my recommendation here is the TS-80P as it's small and compact, but you can always get it done with a cheaper soldering iron, so I'll link to both. DuPont cables or breadboard wire, and just as an FYI, I'll be using DuPont cables. And finally, you're going to need the Zigbee firmware for the Zigbee bridge. Okay, so this website here, Black Adder, has supplied us with a terrific resource called the Zigbee Device Compatibility Re Repository, which includes everything you think you need and more, and to which I have included a link to below. But first, let's go over some fundamental vocabulary so we're all on the same page. The three basic components that make up Zigbee networks are end devices, routers, and coordinators. However, these components can perform many roles. A coordinator, which can also route data to end devices and other routers, is the first device necessary to set up a Zigbee mesh network. And that's what we're going to be setting up today with the Zigbee bridge as a coordinator. The next device is a router, which may provide end device information, route traffic, and help in mesh network extension. The final component is an end device, which normally cannot route traffic. However, some mains level devices are able to route traffic and be an end device. Usually just provides its own data. And the overall number of Zigbee devices on your network depends on the coordinator you have, its hardware and firmware, as well as the number of routers you have in your network. So this video is going to focus on the Zigbee bridge, which we'll be setting up as a coordinator, as I said, and it is responsible for administering the Zigbee network and ensuring that all devices can communicate with one another. Coordinators also play a significant role in network security since they are responsible for delivering security keys to the other network devices. When I first started with Zigbee, I was using the eByte CC2531 Zigbee wireless module, and I have played around with this Zigbee bridge. In my other videos in this series, I'll be discussing the Zigbee Bridge Pro and the Sonoff Zigbee 3 
Dongle Plus. As usual, I'll include links to everything I'm using in the description, but I should mention that the CC2531 by eBite I am not going to be covering in this video because it is not widely supported or even maintained because it doesn't perform well with the new Zigbee 3.0 devices and it can only communicate with a small number of devices. So for flashing, I am going to be following this guide here for the Zigbee Bridge, which you can find by searching under Zigbee Home Automation or you could search by the actual device type which is the Zigbee Bridge. So we're gonna begin with flashing, followed by integrating and then pairing in Home Assistant. One quick note here before we begin, in contrast to the Dongle Plus, which must be hooked up to your Raspberry Pi or PC, these bridges can be installed anywhere in your home, independently of how you're operating your Home Assistant instance, which is a nice little feature. So let's begin. We'll be using the FTDI serial to USB converter and the Tasmodo web installer to flash the Tasmodo binary to the device. This first step will, as they say, tasmatize your device, which just basically means we're changing the software under the hood to Tasmodo instead of what comes on the device. If you're using the web installer like I am here, what we have to do is you can drop this list down here and what the Zigbee bridge is is an ESP8266 so if you want to filter the list to a specific device you can just choose it here. We'll just leave it on all and then we will drop this list down and we will find the Tasmodo Zigbee bridge. In case you're using another tool to flash the Tasmodo binary, the latest firmware at the time of filming was the Tasmodo zbbridge.bin and it's release 12.2 and as I kind of alluded to there's always many ways to perform this flashing. I'm just merely demonstrating a straightforward method that does not require us to install anything. Okay so just a little warning uh, by following my guide I'm offering no express or implied warranty of any sort. I will also not be held liable for any product defects or damages to you or your equipment resulting from the use of this guide. You could be severely injured or be killed if you flash a device plugged into mains level voltage. Even though we're not doing that in this case, the risk is relatively low, but you could end up destroying your Zigbee bridge. So if you don't know what you're doing, stop and seek assistance from someone who does. Now that that's out of the way, what we're going to need to do is take this device apart by removing these four rubber feet to get access to the screws. And then we're going to pull the board out gently from the opposite side of the USB and the pairing button. Now, once we have our PCB out and we solder our breadboard wires or DuPont cables, however you're doing yours, here is the pins that we have to connect everything to. Just be aware that on the Zigbee bridge, we're connecting to the ETX and the RTX. So the bridge must be in programming mode before the Tasmodo firmware can be flashed or uploaded. Uh, this is accomplished by connecting GPIO0 pin to ground, as we saw in the pin guide. And this must be while the device is booting. It is acceptable to leave the ground connected while we complete this flash, but we will need to disconnect it before rebooting the device once we're done flashing. So once you have all your wires hooked up, as you see, we can plug the FTDI device into our USB extension cable and then into our computer. Now we just load up the Tasmodo web installer. And like I said, we have the Tesmodo Zigbee bridge selected and then hit connect. I do apologize for the audio here. Uh, my server kind of started ramping up on me and I didn't notice the fan. I'm doing the best that I can to remove that audio. So sorry about that. And hit connect and your list may look differently. And mine is not showing up in this list, so I need to make sure that I have the proper drivers. 
I'm just going to, uh, you can see here the drivers that um, it needs in order to recognize the USB device. So I'm just going to install those and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have my drivers installed, we can make sure that our Tasmodo ZB bridge is selected. If you just want to show uh, the ESP8266 files, you just click that or all shows them all. It uh, doesn't really matter. If we hit connect now, we can see my USB. We hit connect. And now we can see that we are connected. So we want to install the Tasmodo um, ZB bridge. So we're just going to click that and we're going to click on erase device and then click next. And it's just gonna confirm, are we sure we wanna do this? Yes, and click install. And it's going to go through and flash the device. We'll just be patient. Oh, mine wasn't in boot mode. Let's try that one more time. to disconnect and reconnect. You just have to leave this window up uh, while this is doing this. Shouldn't take too long. I'll just speed through this. All right, there's our installation complete and it has been flashed. So we can go ahead and unplug it from the USB to shut it down and disconnect it from the FTDI. Uh, but before I desolder this, I'm going to just verify that the device is actually operational and I don't have to reflash it. So I'm just going to plug in a regular uh, USB data cable into the bridge in order to power it up. And if successful, I should see a new Wi-Fi access point in my Wi-Fi list. Just connect to it and it's going to provide us a captive portal where we can enter our Wi-Fi credentials and that will allow our new Zigbee bridge to connect to our Wi-Fi. The default address that we're going to go to to enter our Wi-Fi credentials is 192.168.4.1. Okay, so I just powered up my device and I'm just going to go into my network and there we go. So we can see the Tasmodo network. I am not joined to it, so I'm going to do this part from my phone. Actually, you know what? No, I will join it on the computer just so you can see. All right, so it has connected, and as I said, I'm sorry, for whatever reason, it uh, won't let me connect with my computer, um, but I am able to get to it on my phone, so I'm just going to connect to it with my phone, and then once that is done, I will bring the video right back. Okay, so staying connected to the Wi-Fi on the phone, uh, it redirects me to this IP address, which is the uh, newly installed uh, Tasmodo Zigbee bridge. So here we are. Uh, now that I know it works, I can just go ahead and unsolder all of the wires. But before I do that, I'll just continue on with this. So as I mentioned, we're going to upgrade the firmware to the most recent Zigbee firmware, which was uh, NCP-UR-2022-1. 
NSW underscore 6.7.9 underscore 115200.ota at the time of filming. I will link to it. So we're going to first have to download that file. So let's just load up that page where we're going to get our download from. So as I said, this is the latest file here. So I am going to click on it and I am going to download it. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we are going to click on a firmware upgrade and we're going to choose that file that we just downloaded and then we're going to click start upgrade. So we'll let it do its upgrade and when it is done, the device is going to reboot. And then I will bring you into the console. Okay, so just make sure that you disconnect your USB to TTL. And when it had uh, successfully uploaded the new firmware, it restarts the device. Okay, so at this stage, you have two options. You can leave it as is and use Zigbee to Tasmodo or Zigbee Home Automation for Home Assistant. I'm gonna go with the latter. So to use this option, we must change the mode of our device to a TCP bridge. So in order to do this, we're gonna go over to the console. And then once we're in the console here, um, we're going to paste the following command in there. And this will be linked in the description as to what you have to paste in there and then just hit enter. Uh, it will restart and then it is in the TCP IP uh, mode. Now we can uh, navigate to our Home Assistant instance and start integrating our new toy. So to do this, we're going to navigate to settings and then to devices and services, and then click on add integration. And then we will search for uh, ZHA, so Zigbee Home Automation. So we're going to enter manually because we've changed it to a TCP bridge and it's not actually connected to our Raspberry Pi. And hit submit. And the radio we're going to select is the EZSP and hit submit. So for the device serial path, we're going to put in socket colon slash slash and sorry, let me just make that a little bit bigger. And then give the IP address of our Tasmodo device, which we see up here. So that was 10, 21. And then the port is 888 because I didn't change mine. If you changed yours, you would just make that change here. The port speed, we're gonna to go to the max, which is 115200. And data flow control, we're gonna leave on software and hit submit. So that is going to connect us to our Zigbee bridge. And we're going to select here just to keep the radio network settings. And we can see it connecting and it's just initializing it. And then we should receive a notification confirming that we have successfully added our new device. You can choose an area where your yours is or add a new area if you don't see it. I'm just gonna leave mine blank and click finish. And there we have it connected. 
And now the final step of pairing some devices to our Zigbee bridge. There are a few ways that we can do this. You can create an automation that calls the ZHA.permit service and then have that on your dashboard. So every time you switch that, it'll put your Zigbee bridge into looking for devices to be paired or you can come to here and hit configure and click on add a device. And that puts it into a mode where things are being discovered. So I will just start pairing a device that I have and wait for it to pick it up. So there it has picked up uh, my little temperature device. So I'm just going to change this to If I can spell. Temperature. And let's just say that's the bedroom temperature. And now it's finding another device. I have found with my uh, Zigbee buttons, um, unlike Zigbee to MQTT, uh, you no longer see the switch button and we'll just go over how to use the button Okay, so it did pick it up. So if I push the button, we can see it fire off here. If I double press, it shows a double press. However, on our overview, um, yours will probably already come up, but I've edited my dashboard, so I have to add them manually. So we're just going to add a card. So here is our temperature, so we can put in a title and click save. So there is our temperatures. And yes, this is accurate as the room I'm in. It's not actually a bedroom. It's the office that I work in with my networking equipment and it is fairly warm in here. And if we want to add the button, we can go to settings, devices. We can see the button here. Uh, but the only thing that's available to us is the battery. So in order to get this to work, if we go over to settings and then to automations, we can create a new automation. We're going to start with an empty automation and we're going to do a trigger is going to be from a device and the device is the button and here you can see a double press a short press a long press a long release and the battery level changing so let's just go with a double press here and i'll just save that as a new automation and if I double press we can see it triggers so unfortunately we can't see that on the dashboard but it still works so now you can have fun loading up all of your other Zigbee devices and if you've made it this far I really appreciate you if you haven't yet, please click subscribe. I love making these videos, but they take quite a bit of time researching, filming and editing. So by subscribing, you'll help support the channel. I hope you discovered something useful today. As always, 
Please share your thoughts in the comment section, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.